mean, if you go on TikTok or Instagram, you're going to see just hosts of TikTok stars that will talk about having a date. She had a date with a guy and that if he doesn't meet her needs, he is out. That he better, you know, treat me like a, <laughs> a queen, which is also saying treat me like a baby. Edward Edinger, a Jungian analyst, has this uh, this wonderful thing that he says that I, I, I just think it's so brilliant. He says something like, we only look to get from others what we do not give ourselves. And I think that this is really in the spirit of projective identification. And the difference between projection and projective identification is that projection can happen without any interpersonal Mm -hmm. relationship. So therefore you can project things onto movie stars, onto your neighbor, onto somebody Mm -hmm. that you just Mm -hmm. caught a glimpse of in the store. And the experience stays really inside of you. In that way, Jung would say the psyche is trying to get you to be aware of something through the act of projection. Projective identification, as we were just saying, can really only happen in a relationship. That we are pulling somebody into what we would call an enactment. Now, the early analysts generally assumed that the enactment had something to do with early childhood dynamics between the child and the primary caregiver. So there's different theories as to why that happens. One very basic idea is that we are comforted by re-experiencing our early childhood dynamics, even if they were fraught, because it still was an attachment. So we will sometimes be attracted to people who mistreat us, perhaps in the way that our parents mistreated us, because it is something that's familiar, and there is a safety in what is known. Yeah, that's very well put, Joseph. Yeah. Now, when adults are still doing that in their lives, it may be that they do it infrequently when they're put under massive amounts of stress. And this is true for any of us. If you've ever been in a car accident, you know, and the, the next few hours afterwards you find yourself saying things or doing things that just were highly unusual. But that's often because we've been cast backwards in time because of the stress. There may be other circumstances where we, we behave in ways that are, are not familiar to ourselves. But when we become very, very young, one of the things that we are reaching for is a state of oceanic union mm-hmm. with another person which sometimes is called an ouroboric relationship with someone. The Freudian said this was a pre-Oedipal stage. It's very, very early. And so the psyche wants the safety and connection of that oceanic merging with another person. And in that way, the traits of the distressed person comes distributed in mm-hmm. the oceanic field. So there is no clear sense of where I am and where you are. And of course, this is probably the experience that a child has, an infant has. One of the hypotheses about that very early experience of the infant um, and the infant's lack of ability to really, of course, there's no ego yet, so there's no sense of, um, you know, I'm here and you're there and we're two separate people. So uh, one of the early object relations theorists uh, who really lifted up projective identification into the psychological uh, vocabulary was Melanie Klein, uh, a British uh, analyst who's Austrian and moved to England and worked there. And she theorized that, the, that a baby's first uh, orientation is what she called the paranoid schizoid position, uh, which uh, you know sounds pretty f- sort of formal and uh, strange. But that what the infant could do uh, w- was simply to have two separate 
uh, feeling level categories of what is good and what is bad. And it got, um, you know, sort of shortened into the good breasts and the bad breasts. So when the baby is hungry and mom appears uh, to feed, that is good. Uh, When mom does not appear or the baby is uncomfortable in some way, that is bad. And that those two things are very, uh, very, very separate uh, realities for the baby. This stage is succeeded, she thought, in uh, the latter part of the baby's first year of life by what she called the depressive position, which is the dawning realization uh, that mom is one and the same person all the time. But sometimes I am gratified and sometimes I am not. And that there's a stage of kind of mourning for that previous stage of the good mother that gratifies me, whatever I want and whatever I need comes from the outside, from some good source. And then there is um, something separate uh, that is distressing or bad. Uh, No, there's an other person here. And we have good now. Oceanic blending. Yes. Eventually into, oh, there's a me and there's a you. Yeah. And so it finally becomes a, a dyad. Yeah. It goes from the unus mundus mm-hmm. into yeah. the ego and other state, yeah. which is developmentally normal. Yes. I'm smiling because of what you just said of there's a you. And part of us, I think, for our whole lives goes, no, oh, damn, you know, you don't always match up with exactly what I want. Uh, There is no you who is perfect. We're going to be disappointed and loving and receive love. And, you know, all of the other uh, shades of interaction that go along with human beings. Now, this expectation in the unus mundus and the blended state is something that is ubiquitous on social media. I mean, if you go on TikTok or Instagram, you're going to see just hosts <laughs> of, of, of TikTok stars that will talk about having a date. She had a date with a guy, and that if he doesn't meet her needs, he is out. He is just worth nothing. That he better, <laughs> you know, treat me like a, a queen, which is also saying treat me like a baby where any need that I have, this person is going to instantly meet. And if this person doesn't make me instantly happy, they are out the door. And that's part of that splitting. Either my frustrations and needs are going to be met, or the person is is bad in some fashion. And I'm not going to be okay until I get somebody who is always going to be the good breast for me. Gratifying. Right. That other person should be gratifying. At all times. And that's the, <laughs> that's the thing is there's no tolerance for yeah. a frustration in the relationship. And when we're around any adult who, who can't tolerate a reasonable amount of frustration, we know that they're in that very early mm. place and they're looking for the comfort of a merged relationship. And, and so projective identification is considered to be, a, you know, a fairly primitive defense in the language of, of psychoanalysis. So, you know, it's kind of classically thought of as sort of a borderline defense, uh, you know, a not very advanced defense, like, for example, intellectualization is a much... Uh, more uh, sophisticated defense. But I would say that, uh, I don't know, I think that we probably all engage in projective identification a lot of the time. So I'm I'm not really with the program that this is only something that happens if you're not a well established, uh, you know, psychologically refined person, you know, we, we can all we can all do this. And 
it actually brings to mind something that you were just saying, Joseph, about uh, you know people in social media. Edinger, Edward Edinger, a Jungian analyst, has this uh, this wonderful thing that he says that I, I I just think it's so brilliant, and I'm only I'm only paraphrasing it, but he says something like, "We only look to get from others what we do not give ourselves," and I think that mm-hmm. this is really in the spirit of projective identification. Right. So if you are very anxious, for example, about, uh, let's say, let's say you're a young person about to graduate from college and you're very, very anxious about your career and you haven't really gotten your feet up under you. You haven't maybe taken advantage of some of the things that you might have taken advantage of. You don't know what you want to do. You feel lost. You feel scared. You know, one of the things you could do in that situation is say, right, well, I better figure my stuff out. Let me go to the career center. (laughs) Let me take stock of my strengths and weaknesses. Let me come up with a plan. But if you're feeling rather more dysregulated than that, you might engage in projective identification. You know, for example, you might lash out, you know, at someone and 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 what you want to do in that sense is you're really trying to induce in the other person the distress that you're feeling. So and and that's where that's where it goes back to like this is one of you said earlier projective identification is really just communication. So, you know, you don't have yes. the ability to right. re- to really um say well gosh, I am feeling really terrified and uh you know, I I I need to really take that on board and maybe I can ask for empathy. It's like too much. It's too overwhelming. So instead, you revert to let me see if I can make you feel as distressed as I feel 